Thank you very much, Stacey. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining this session. This is a strategic priorities in practice session four, improving impacts through strong child friendly accountability and a feedback mechanism. Thank you very much. Great. So Paul and Lim, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. This is Reem Al Musri, the Accountability Officer for World Vision Jordan, Acting Accountability Coordinator for World Vision Syria Response. And on this presentation, it will be alongside Paul Kikwe, the meal manager. So at the beginning, let me give you like a brief about World Vision Syria Response. World Vision Syria Response basically uh, operating in Jordan, Syria, and Turkey since 2011. We are implementing multi projects in multi sectors uh, health, education, life saving, protection, and livelihood. Uh, we are implementing these projects in camps, uh, urban, and rural areas, uh, including the host communities. So as a first step of accountability, we are making sure that we have on a place customized guidelines and SOPs to make sure a two levels, a, the re a relevant staff, a, like participating level and an organizational level uh, to make sure that they have a clear understanding and clear reference for accountability. Um, to, to measure, uh, these two measures have like a significant um, and sig significant like impact and effect in order to integrate accountability practices uh, into the project management cycle starting from the design phase until the end of the project. When it comes to developing the accountability system here, we are talking about listening to the uh, beneficiaries voices, especially uh, children, to have like integrated system and comprehensive system in place and to have appropriate and accessible accountability system for everyone. Uh, we are uh, um, like delivering the children voices and beneficiaries voices to the management uh, to be able to build the comprehensive accountability system. So on my presentation or to, uh, during our presentation today, we will, uh, we will share our experience in terms of listening to children voices in World Vision Series response. And we will include the, um, the following topics on this presentation. Get the practices, opportunities, challenges, and lessons learned. Uh, next slide, please. Let me start with the good practices. Uh, the first good practice is customized accountability assessment tool. Uh, this uh, we are using body mapping tool. This tool was developed by a World Vision Global Center, and we contextualize it to be aligned to children context and needs. So um, we are using this. A tool to uh, consult children and to make sure that we are listening to their voices and we are consulting them in all barriers of accountability, how they would prefer to, um, to receive information, how they would prefer to provide their feedback and complaints, and how they would like to be consulted and participated in the project. The second was is a, the child um, child customized accountability mechanisms based on this um, based on the children preferences we are determining the accountability mechanisms to make sure that these mechanisms are accessible safe and friendly the third good practice is orienting and building the capacities for internal and external staff we are doing that too ensure that we have like effective accountability system in a place and uh, we are by conducting um, accountability assessment with the partners and by providing uh, sessions and training to the internal and external staff. The last one of the good practice is to advocate for accountability and to receive 
to receive support from the senior level. We are doing this one to ensure that World Vision staff are prioritizing the accountability team and they are supporting the accountability team to close the loop of all cases uh, on a timely manner and to make sure that our beneficiary, they are fully involved in the participating in our program. Moving to the next slide, please. Here we have best practices in practice. Actually, I'm so happy to share with you these success stories uh, in World Vision and Syria Response One in Jordan and another one in C uh, Northwest Syria. The first one is about the shy protection and emergency project in Jordan. Uh, under this project, we conducted accountability assessment with the children from different ages and different genders. As you can see here in the photo, this is the body mapping tool that we used for the accountability assessment. This is a, a child-friendly uh, tool. During this uh, assessment, we asked children and consulted them regarding how they would like to receive information about World Vision, the project selection criteria, and uh, the available feedback and complaints mechanisms. We also consulted them on the on how they would prefer to raise their voices, how they would like to provide feedback, complaints, positive feedback, um, negative feedback, and we uh, asked them how they would prefer to be consulted under this project and how they would like to participate on it. Based on this uh, assessment, we have a findings and we did uh, like amendments based on it and activated some channels. On another level of information provision, we starting distributing leaflets for children based on their request. And the level of feedback and complaints, um, we installed suggestion boxes for the children and they decided to design these suggestion boxes to be more friendly and to feel that they are more consulted and they, they are supporting installing the accountability system. The uh, second case study, it was uh, under HPP project. It's a child protection project in Northwest Syria. Uh, the children would like to be involved on the selection process of the facilitators for the uh, recreational uh, activities. Uh, so they raised their suggestions and requests to be a part of the selection criteria. This suggestion and request were de delivered to the project manager um, and the action taken was that um, we, we um, included the uh, requested certain characteristics that the children ask for um, with the selection criteria. So actually, I'm so proud to share uh, these uh, best practices with you all. Next slide, please. Okay, let us talk about the willingness of partners to strengthen their accountability affected population system. At the beginning of the project, the accountability team uh, conducting an accountability assessment with the partners. Um, and based on the assessment findings, we are providing customized accountability training to the partners, focusing on um, their strengths and weaknesses and we are helping them to enhance and develop their accountability uh, system and to make it as child friendly as possible and to and we are encouraging them to use child friendly tools the second opportunity is the commitment of international ngos to include the affected population system accountability affected population in their programming so we are providing a like a staff with the orientation and refreshing session always to, uh, to ensure that we are participating in the design phase um, and that our program integrates and includes the targeted communities focusing on the children as world vision is a child focused organization 
The third one is the willingness to share knowledge, best practices, and lessons learned among the humanitarian aid workers. So the accountability team is um, it like joining the meetings, the internal and external meetings, and they talking up about their knowledge, experiences, and always they were happy to share the tools and the guidelines that we have with the aid workers. The last one, it's a platform for, for a platform for sharing world vision, serious one, extensive experience, implementing a multi-country accountability system through partners. So World Vision Theory Response is implementing accountability in three countries, as I mentioned previously, in Jordan, Syria, and Turkey. Each country have a different culture, different um, conditions, different partners. So the accountability team always ensuring that um, we are adapting and uh, conceptualizing um, and amending the accountability system uh, based on the needs and based on the partner's capacities. And um, we are focusing on the um, on making a budget for the partners to build their capacities and to encourage them to have um, like a flexible system uh, with children and with the adults. Um, last note that I have, it's... Um, the tools that we are using as well. We have a monitoring um, monitoring uh, system in a place to make sure that we are uh, on a track and we are working effectively with the, with the, our beneficiaries, especially children. So we are conducting satisfaction survey with the beneficiary regularly to make sure that our system, our accountability system, um, is on a place and they are satisfied with using it and to listen to their suggestions to improve our uh, system. Also, we have an indicator uh, on the grant healthy tracker to make sure that we are uh, on a track regarding closing um, the loop of the received cases. And uh, this grant healthy tracker we fill it um, on a monthly basis. So that's it for the um, for these points, and um, now we will move on uh, to the challenges and the recommendations, uh, the lessons learned with uh, Paul. Over to you, Paul. Thank you very much, Rem, uh, for the first part of the presentation. And uh, on this note, I will be taking the the participants through um, the, main, uh, the challenges and uh, recommendations and what we need to um, have improved. Uh, regarding challenges, uh, there are quite a number of challenges that we have been ex ex facing and experiencing as serial response while implementing accountability, especially that which is um, child focused. The first one being uh, budget limitations. We all realize that um, there are quite a number of priorities organizations, especially humanitarian organizations have. And uh, normally uh, when it comes to prioritizing, accountability comes um, at the tail end. So it's a challenge um, that comes across but uh, what we have been trying to do to have this addressed is to do advocacy around accountability within the organization from the senior management team to grant acquisition department, operations and the program teams. And uh, I'm happy to share that uh, it's taking, um, uh, there is progress uh, around this whereby we're able to raise some money to facilitate the accountability activities. The second challenge is uh, on prioritization of accountability whereby, um, as I mentioned in the first point that uh, there are lots of prior priorities for organizations, uh, including World Vision. And um, in most cases, you realize that um, accountability is not uh, at the top. 
but um, it's something that we have been working on for some time. Uh, and uh, we are doing this through a number of approaches. First one being uh, advocating in meetings, um, in uh, uh, having uh, interdepartmental forums to discuss accountability. We are also working with our partners. Uh, it's the other challenge where we bring on board partners that um, are not very much focused on accountability. Probably it's not one of their priorities, but uh, what we do is to advocate, um, have meetings with them, do um, capacity, um, train, capacity building initiatives through trainings, orientations, and refresher trainings. The other approach that we use is sharing as much information as possible. For instance, um, in, in uh, our program, we share monthly accountability reports with uh, the senior management and uh, other stakeholders within the organization. We have also secured um, a slot uh, to present an overview of accountability in the serial response on a monthly basis during the SLT meeting, that's a senior leadership team meeting. So this is helping us to create awareness and to create um, understanding within the organization around um, the importance of accountability. And uh, it's, it's really helping us make some progress, but uh, we still need to do quite a lot. The other challenge is um, implementing accountability through partners without uh, increasing um, the burden on them, especially around funding and staffing. It's, it's a challenge, uh, uh, especially uh, because as World Vision Syria response, um, we are implementing uh, over 70% of our project through partners. So to achieve accountability, it's just important that uh, the partners are appreciative of the importance of accountability, why we need to do it, and have the skills, the commitment to deliver accountability, especially when it comes to children, considering the issues around um, culture, uh, context, um, talking about North um, West Syria, it becomes very um, com uh, complex. But uh, what we are trying to do is to um, put in place mechanisms of engaging the partners identifying um, where are the gaps and coming in as much as possible to support them uh, through our field teams, um, through engagement at the senior level, including the senior, the senior management. Then uh, the other challenge is around uh, limited access uh, for some areas, especially in uh, Northwest Syria, we have quite a number of programs going in, uh, going on in Northwest Syria, but uh, it becomes at some point very, very difficult to reach some of the beneficiaries, uh, especially because of the security situation uh, where the security team keep advising us that uh, no, you don't have to reach this place because it's not secure. So that means that, um, the beneficiaries based in that location uh, cannot access the services, cannot uh, access um, accountability interventions. But um, in this case, as the senior, senior response team, what we are trying to do is to um, continue working with uh, the partners because in some cases they are able to reach the beneficiaries. And very lastly, regarding the challenges, is the limited capacity for conducting or implementing accountability, especially the child-friendly uh, uh, mechanisms or activities. We are all aware that um, a 
accountability is uh, the general concept is still new for most organizations, especially the local uh, or national organizations. It's a new idea to them. So you can imagine if we are saying the general, the general, the general context is new. How about the friend, the child friendly? mechanisms uh, which require more skills more knowledge and experience so it's one area that we have realized um, and um, we are using the same approach using our knowledge and skills and experience to enhance the capacity of our partners so these are the challenges that we are facing. There are quite many, but we have decided to focus on these and I've uh, also shared how we are managing them. So we will go to the next slide. Thank you very much, Paul. Can you quickly wrap up in a few Please. minutes? Sure, I'll do that. Um, I'll talk more. Um, next, next slide, please. Okay. Um, Basing on uh, what we have shared so far, uh, the challenges, the best practices, these are the recommendations that um, we are proposing. The first one around budget allocation, we uh, recommend that um, all stakeholders, uh, organizations do as much um, advocacy as possible to raise funds to implement accountability activities. Then uh, the second recommendation is around uh, capacity building of the partners, which we can do uh, through conducting um, capacity needs assessment around accountability for partners, use the, the findings to develop uh, a capacity building plan, and then go ahead and uh, implement that plan. The third recommendation is around regular accountability training and reference associations. Let's be, we need to be as deliberate as possible around uh, accountability training and capacity building because we need that critical mass to implement and advocate for accountability. And uh, very lastly, uh, we need to, especially the serial response. So we need to have um, an interagency feedback referral and response mechanism I don't know, but I think if it's in existence, not active, we need to have this as um, a platform for sharing feedback and collaborating and coordinating. So these are the recommendations and quickly, I'll use one minute to uh, talk about what we need to improve. Um, the next slide, please. Um, there are quite a lot of things that we need to improve, but uh, we, we picked up these two, donor prioritization and support for child participation. Uh, I think um, as the, um, the actors, the NGOs, our NGOs work to um, improve accountability, especially around child participation, we think that the donors need to do much more. This is experienced in, um, in when we receive uh, feedback on grant proposals and budgets, they will never comment on, they rarely comment on accountability. They will pick up on other things. So we want to see donors pick more interest in this. Uh, and very lastly, we need to, enhance and strengthen coordination and collaboration of all the stakeholders from donors, um, government agencies, uh, and uh, national organizations working in the humanitarian sector to, to enhance, to strengthen, and to prioritize accountability, especially around child protection. And the very, very, very last letter from me, all of us, the, the organizations, individual humanitarian workers, governments, we need to be as deliberate as possible. Deliberate, deliberate, deliberate as possible when it comes to accountability. Thank you so much. I submit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul and Liam. It's very comprehensive uh, presentation, and, and uh, I feel very enthusiastic message on the on the accountability. Uh, we can cover more in the panel discussion session.
If you have any questions, please type in the chat box. And then now I want to introduce our next presenter, uh, Ala. She presents on the improved safeguarding system to improve accountability to children in North Australia. Uh, please go to the next slide. And Ala, the floor is yours. Thank you. And I would like to thank my colleagues as well. Hi, they have... Um, uh, introduce some of the main points and topics I wanted to uh, cover through this presentation. Uh, so I am Ala Mugrabi and I am uh, the Child Protection Specialist in Hadas Network. Uh, unfortunately, my colleague Kutaiba couldn't uh, join, but uh, uh, we wanted to share the, through this uh, presentation uh, the Syria education program that we uh, implemented in schools. Uh, and we use behavioral change communication to respond and reduce child safeguarding incidents in primary school in North Syria. This presentation will highlight uh, key elements of success, challenges, and system sustainability points that we can think of uh, for uh, this context. Uh, uh, further, we, want, we wanted to show how improved safeguarding system helps the improve of accountability to children um, uh, in, inside schools. So, um, and we are going to focus, the, the program is really uh, comprehensive and had, had many points, but I wanted to highlight uh, how the child-friendly mechanism uh, made it um, a better um, a program and how we implemented uh, this um, uh, program in a, a complex uh, conflict uh, context like uh, Northwest Syria. Uh, so next, please. Okay, so um, my friends have uh, um, introduced uh, some of the uh, points in, um, in Northwest Syria and uh, what is it like in uh, Northwest Syria, but I wanted to hear from you um, and from your experience in working with the safeguarding system uh, in schools. So if you can please uh, um, access the Menti link um, and uh, share with us uh, with one word uh, or two words, um, like uh, what do you think it's important? Why do you think it's, uh, it's important to establish safeguarding systems in schools? So uh, if I, uh, the Minty link now is in the chat box and uh, we can now um, uh, see maybe if we can share the screen and see uh, some of the points that we can reflect on. If you think about uh, safeguarding or accountability systems in schools, uh, using one or two words, what can you think of? You can enter it here and we can share together uh, this experience. So we have some responses now. We see like uh, confidentiality, which is, which is very important for our um, uh, accountability and to ensure safeguarding issues are addressed timely and effectively, uh, responsiveness to incidents, uh, child-friendly, uh, to prevent exploitation of children uh, for grades and to hold teachers accountable exactly uh, for the protection of children, exactly. And this was the main objective for our program. So if we can go back to our slides and I can show you um, what we have uh, worked to make safer environments for uh, children uh, by the participation of children. So in Northwest Syria, it's, um, the context is that we are in outside the regime control area. And um, already before the conflict, the safeguarding procedures and policies are lacking. So we were working with um, a really complex situation and challenging uh, context um, uh, in which uh, uh, children, um, uh, child protection is, is 
uh, a new principle that we introduced to the beginning of uh, NGOs work in 2012 in Northwest Syria, it's more in 2016. And uh, physical violence and humiliation were unfortunately common modes of discipline, not only at homes, but also at schools. Uh, a decade of conflict had didn't make it uh, easier um, uh, to, to solve this problem. However, it made it uh, more challenging. Uh, children have been mentally wounded uh, by violent, violence, uh, poverty, and pushed to drop out. And if we are going to talk about child participation, it was nearly uh, absence uh, in North Syria. And uh, also, we were working with semi-structured bodies and communities. Uh, we had the education directorate, with, which is the most formal uh, body there. However, it does not have um, um, it, it's not recognized as a, um, um, a structure that is um, um, recognized by international community, however, recognized by the community as um, controlling the, the schools and uh, the way they work. So we were working with them to introduce this um, uh, system, um, but um, I, I want to focus more on the child split. Uh, uh, approach that we used. So if we can move to the next slide. Um, we thought about the child-led and community-driven prevention uh, response intervention that we implemented in Northwest Syria. So we created some uh, strategies to, enga to engage children and their parents in the design and implementation and monitoring of the safeguarding system. We um, uh, rephrased all the code of conduct uh, to be in a child-friendly uh, way, and we put it in a posters uh, to facilitate the understanding of this code of conduct. And then we asked children and um, and the focus group discussions and um, uh, uh, what uh, what kind of um, behaviors for them uh, were acceptable and not acceptable by the teachers and what they want how what uh, how do they want to um, uh, report those um, incidents so uh, the mechanism has uh, been designed uh, around the child participation and um, uh, later on we also uh, um, identified some children to be um, uh, representative of uh, their uh, peers. Uh, we tried to balance this uh, identification to have uh, girls, boys, children with disabilities, uh, and also uh, considering the communities uh, to include uh, uh, IDPs, internal displaced people, and uh, host communities as well uh, among those children to make this balance and make this representation as um, uh, holistic as possible. Um, and uh, we uh, also did this uh, group discussions with parents as well to extract uh, lessons learned and um, see how this mechanism is going to be working um, uh, around them in the most comfortable way for them, uh, but in maintaining the safety of children uh, as Way, uh, as way as possible. As well in the monitoring uh, of this mechanism, if it's effective or working or not, we uh, asked children how do they um, measure this uh, system, if it's working or not, or, uh, or how uh, they are, um, how much uh, they are using this mechanism and which way can, can it be changed. And uh, we to we measured the key factors to improve uptake of uh, the uh, safeguarding processes, as I mentioned. Um, we considered the key challenges in the establishing of safeguarding system, and um, we suggested ways to overcome those, uh, such as uh, we had some uh, issues of uh, girls' participation in their education and the, their higher uh, dropout uh, rate and in some uh, period, time periods. Um, 
so, so we considered this um, uh, when we were um, uh, measuring the challenges of this uh, uh, approach, and we tried to empower girls to uh, participate in this to see what incidents has maybe factored in their uh, dropout rates. And later on, when the boys were uh, a dropout rate uh, were higher, we so from this mechanism, what key factors maybe has factored to this uh, issue uh, to uh, improve this um, safer environment in schools? Um, uh, next slide, please. But um, uh, for many um, Syrian children, violence is an everyday occurrence. Uh, 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 this is an unfortunate uh, for them and to aid them in the most safer way uh, uh, possible, um, we identified people that can uh, find this Incidents. So we train teachers, we train PSS facilitators in schools um, and uh, parents and PTA com committees uh, on how to identify children in stress or uh, uh, post trauma. And uh, what is the possible ways to um, refer them to our system and uh, they can have uh, the support they need. Um, and we designed the vision and the aims of our intervention around the children. Uh, so we made the child as at the heart of our intervention, and we made the child participate in this intervention as well. So uh, children were also uh, part of the identification when we introduced some of uh, the programs of peer-to-peer um, -peer support uh, of children. Uh, uh, like the Save the Children, I, I, support, my, uh, uh, I support My Friends uh, program. Uh, we introduced that uh, so children can identify and report children in need uh, of this uh, support. Um, and working with children and teachers, as I said, and school staff, um, and we worked with the education directorate when we introduced this approach. Uh, to increase the participation of children. As I said, we made uh, a child representative and semi, like something like uh, uh, student councils uh, in which children can participate and raise their voices um, around the school. So it's a familiar uh, concept in the school that children are participating and they are communicating. Um, uh, their concerns to the school staff and uh, to the school and the school can um, uh, respond to those concerns in a way uh, that is um, uh, around what the, uh, the children has um, uh, like uh, communicated. So uh, I'm conscious about the time. Maybe we can go to uh, further to the next uh, slide and we can introduce the mentee um, where I want to hear from you. Uh, the challenges, uh, if any, you have faced around the safeguarding um, um, uh, implementing uh, systems. So uh, if you had uh, in mind any challenges or limitation in your context about safeguarding, maybe we can share them together now and I uh, can cross, cross them with our um, uh, context. So in your uh, mentee, you can share with us uh, any challenges that you think or any limitations to implementing a safeguarding uh, system in your uh, context. You can use um, your words and uh, uh, in phrasing your uh, challenges. Or uh, if you want, you can uh, only mention one word um, that we can that can lead us lead us to um, uh, uh, to those challenges. And maybe you can uh, you have uh, some of the challenges and limitations that are similar to what we face in implementing this um, uh, system. So budget limitation in implementing child-friendly accountability system uh, with local implementing partners, uh, power imbalance, 
uh, reports of safeguarding issue not dealt with effectively by duty bearers. Um, so, uh, so those are really similar to what we have uh, faced. Um, and we address the, uh, some of those uh, with uh, different levels uh, in the school. So uh, with the schools uh, that we were working with, we have uh, the ch children, uh, PTAs, and uh, the school staff, and we have the head teachers, and then we have the education directorate. With the education directorate, uh, we worked with, uh, with them to implement the safeguarding system and accountability system within the whole area in Northwest Syria. And that led to a lot of capacity building um, uh, uh, initiatives that we led, which needed budgets, uh, and uh, we had some limitations on that. However, uh, that led to uh, uh, a change in the structure of the education directorate and the uh, the new um, positions that uh, were uh, opened in, in schools, uh, such as safety or safeguarding officer, and they have their supervisors in the education directorate, uh, who are uh, who are, they are. Uh, responsible for the uh, responding to reports and there is a committee to open the uh, complaint boxes etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, and uh, the, uh, and this was explained to children on how to use those complaint boxes and what are the ways to increase their participation in those uh, uh, mechanisms and that led us to uh, um, uh, opening a many lines of uh, part, uh, of reporting uh, to this mechanism uh, so we uh, made mechanism that is child friendly this uh, child disability friendly and uh, for children who can read or uh, write uh, they all can participate in this mechanism because we opened so many lines to uh, report any incident we had mobile phones we, we had complaint boxes we had um, a self uh, referral and they have the uh, safeguarding officer in the school that they can go to and um, express their concerns. Uh, with it, uh, and for children with disability, uh, we accommodate those mechanisms according to their uh, uh, disability. So we, we conveyed all the ways for all children to um, uh, participate or their parents uh, upon their um, uh, 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 suggestions that they uh, express, uh, express in the focus group discussions. So lack of culture and accountability to children within the schools, this was uh, an, uh, an important challenge and limitation for our uh, program. However, we were um, working in this program now for five years. So now we are seeing uh, a positive um, results from this uh, implementation. As I said, we have um, the, the, the program is really comprehensive and now we have um, um, the, the, the light of uh, hope for this culture to be um, uh, more inviting for children uh, and more protective of their children. So if we can move to the slides now and I can um, let you know of our, um, uh, how we overcome those challenges and uh, how we respond to those safety concerns uh, with the emerge of them. Uh, so as I said, our strategy was uh, comprehensive uh, with students being able to safely express their concerns. We were able to um, respond to them in a timely manner. Um, uh, so, as I said, we teach children how to recognize different types of abuse and how to report it. Um, we conveyed many ways of child-friendly um, uh, matters on how to uh, convey these messages. Uh, and we, um, uh, to prevent future injury to the kids, we complaints are handled with uh, cautious and, as I said, confidentiality. Uh, survivors were uh, provided with psychosocial uh, support and medical assistance. So some of the uh, results that all teachers were trying on safe, uh, on, and find on the kid, uh, code of conduct, the children attended the child rights, uh, rights activities, children developed a child-friendly code of conduct and classroom no norms. 
so in the results, we have uh, 4,355 class that are represented, uh, they have represented and elected uh, <coughs> children. Uh, 82,900 uh, children assessed by the uh, child friendly uh, uh, um, safety uh, this year and the girls uh, were centered and the improved of their well-being we have 76 uh, percent of them um, uh, uh, changed to 98 percent of them uh, are um, better uh, resilience and um, 86, uh, 186 uh, children that dropped, uh, were dropped off, we uh, uh, re-entered them to the school system. We can discuss further uh, maybe in the Q&A uh, some of our results, but my uh, maybe takeaway from this program that we take aggressive actions to make school safer for children, because it's really important to have inclusive and safe environment for children to be well and safe and educated. So maybe now I will uh, uh, give you uh, over uh, to do the floor. Great. Thank you very much, Ala, and thank you very much for sharing the safeguarding and accountability system in Northwest Syria. And congratulations on your successful outcome. And then I take notes, your point on that. We, we need to put children at the heart of the project, working with children, and then take aggressive action to make uh, schools a safe for children. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.